So uh, this is our October 7th Energy and Environment Advisory Committee meeting, call to order. Does anyone need to disclose their pecuniary interests or anything of general nature thereof? Jackie, no. Great. And have we all had a chance to look at the previous minutes? I just, uh... Anna? I, I, I just wanted to make a small change. It says that the meeting that uh, Climate Momentum was going to have in 4.0 was going to be held in person, but in the end it wasn't. It went online. So there was no in-person attendance under 4.0. So. Yeah, hey, Anna, I'm just gonna leave it as it was reported last month. Okay. We can make a change if you wanna make it in these minutes, we can do that. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, you can make mention of that when we talk. Oh, and I do the report. report. Okay, yeah. And I noticed we now have Craig with us. Can you see me? Yes. I can't see you. Oh. Yeah, I can actually. It's just you. <laughs> oh, well, what else do you need really? Oh, that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great, let's put that in the minutes too, Casey. <laughs> Okay, so um, apart from that, is there anything else that we need to change in the minutes or anything, any omissions that stood out? Okay. No, so I'm gonna ask for a motion to adopt the minutes. I see Anna's hand, seconded. Jody. And all in favor? Done. Great, thank you. All right, updates from our working group. So I'm gonna pass it over to, actually I might go straight to carbon reduction because Bonnie's not on yet. So Anna, will you be pro providing us with an update? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Um, the year commenced with Climate Momentum hosted a, um, it turned out to be an online uh, webinar that was an, initially we'd hoped they could accommodate 25 people at Avondale, but in the end it made was prudent to keep uh, keep the webinar online, but it went very well. It was, a, I don't know if everybody got to see it. it. It's on the Climate Momentum website, but it was a very inspiring session on how cities can lead on climate, creative plans and concrete action. And it was the introduction of Amara Katrick. I think is how she says, Kartik, Kartik, who's our new climate change coordinator who introduced the components of the climate change plan and what, you know, how it's put together. And there were two guests, one from Ithaca, who was uh, Luis Aguirre Torres, director of sustainability there, invited because Ithaca is about the same population as Stratford. Um, they're quite far ahead in their climate change plans and actions. And the other guest was, um, uh, Louisa Berhen, who's the climate change coordinator in Whistler and uh, Climate Momentum had invited her because it's a town that's also quite reliant on tourism, a normal year round population of 12,000. Both of the speakers were very inspiring and um, they, were, they had um, very good, um, what do you call it, decks and they're all available on the Climate Momentum website. So that was, uh, uh, inspiring and I hope gave us lots of ideas for going forward. Um, we did the climate, the, our working group met and we thought best to wait for our next webinars till after the climate action plan is submitted and so we can work in step with Amara and kind of have a more planned um, uh, set of, of webinars going forward so that we're working in sync with the climate action plan. So we we postponed and waiting for that to be delivered and, and we've just circulated, a, we've taken the suggestions that the e, e committee made to the city plan and put them into a, a, a chart so that we can move forward with motions for ideas that are put forward in that plan. So we hope to be doing that um, uh, as we go forward. And what else? So we will meet again and decide. I don't. When do we know when the climate action plan is going forward? Is it October twenty sixth? Don't know. It's being presented on the twelfth. On the twelfth. Okay. 
So we'll meet and, and then hope we can plan to do something with Amara in November. Um, I think that's it for our group. Okay. Emily was very helpful with the climate momentum presentation, by the way, again, the tech expert. <laughs> it actually um, wasn't part of, <laughs> part of the most recent one because when oh. they moved away from the church, they had so many volunteers to oh. um, help out with the online. So oh, I can't take really credit right. for that this time. Well, it was the, you know, willingness that's important. Yes, <laughs> it was a great, I watched, it was a great presentation. Yeah. Okay. yeah, there was a lot of talk about uh, waste management, Kate. So you might want to tune in. She's unmuting. Can you send me a link? Yeah, yeah. The climatemomentum.ca, I think, is the yeah, all on there. Um, I think we'll talk in greater detail um, about the climate action plan um, under new business, we could, and just get clear about next steps with that. But yeah, highly recommend it. It was really amazing to hear what other cities are doing because it can seem so daunting. And then these guys are just like, yep, yeah, I was told to meet this target. And if I don't meet it, uh, I lose my job. So I'm just going to meet it. <laughs> right. Easy peasy. Okay, so that is the carbon reduction uh, working group and ecological working group. I know that Bonnie has an update, so I'll turn it to him and see if anyone sure. else. Sure. Yeah, sorry, I was late. I got caught doing stuff. Okay, um, so just an update on invasives. Uh, Brandon, they need about a day and a half to treat the buckthorn down in TJ Dolan. There's still to do. Uh, as for tree planting, uh, the end of October, there will be 500 trees and shrubs going in at the dog park where there were 400 ash trees taken down. So ASIN is uh, going to sponsor that planting because uh, they recently hired their 500th employee. So they want to do something there and talk to SDSS and um, a class will come out and plant as well. So that's happening the end of October. And then there's another 200 trees going in at um, TJ Dolan at Lorne and Olone. Bertrand and um, members of the Rotary Club and the Girl Guides will be putting those in. So overall 700 trees this fall in shrubs. Awesome. Craig, do you have anything to add to that? It's okay if you don't. Okay, anyone else on that working group? Okay, nice. Um, then our newly formed ICI Waste Reduction Working Group. Sammy, I'm assuming that you will be speaking to this. Yeah? Sure, I can speak to that. Um, so we did, we met on September 29th. Um, it was, everybody, it was a pretty, it, we pulled it together pretty quickly. So it, um, not a, a ton of members could make it, but we still had a good productive meeting. Um, what we're currently working on right now is um, putting together a Beacon Herald article. So um, we're hoping to um, kind of write up a report um, about Stratford's impact and how well the program's been going um how much waste has been reduced uh, we were just recently sent um, a stratford summary article um and it said so far it said that we've saved enough waste um that's the same height as um the mount anisoboine i think it was called in alberta but it was it's a pretty cool visual we're hoping to use it in the article has some really cool stats about how much CO2 we've um, avoided and how much plastic we've avoided again from being produced. Um, so we're hoping to gather those stats together and put together an article. We also are trying to figure out the whole coffee cups issue um, because there's been some confusion in the community um, about can they be composted even though they say they're composted. 
Um, can they go in the green bin? Can they go in the recycling? Do they all go in the garbage, whether they're biodegradable or not? All these big questions. Um, and we're lucky to have Kate. Uh, she's going to kind of sort through some of that information for us and try and figure out how, like, where do coffee cups go? Because we get a lot of questions about that. So we're hoping we can figure that one out. And then finally, we're hoping that um, the carbon reduction group um, or e, e in general could help and work with us to put on an education session um, about recycling and the Greenman program and just waste in general. Um, so that would be Kate offered to reach out to Blue Water and Storm Fisher um, to see if we can either, first of all, if they're interested in doing a webinar, um, if they'd want to come and actually speak. But if that's not something they're interested in, potentially even using some of their resources for that webinar. So uh, Kate will reach out to them and we'll see how that goes. Um, but we were just thinking it might be able to be part of the um, carbon reduction E&E &E, um, webinar series. That's what we were hoping. Yeah. Amazing. Um, those stats that you have from the friendlier company are really, really useful to have in terms of um, just tying it back to the climate action plan, trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I know Bonnie and I were talking earlier about um, an article that highlighted the GHG savings from the Stratford City buses switching to the on-demand transit on the weekends. And it really puts it into perspective about why these things are important. So that you have those numbers from that company is amazing. And readers should care about that in light of climate change, expanding the life of our landfill, which is um, not a hot topic per se for most, but you know, an upcoming um, issue. So yeah, any way that we can spread that information is great. Um, I forwarded an email to Sammy uh, from Kate and Mike Bites at the city, just following up on our uh, meeting last month, looking at ways that we can promote the fact that restaurants are using these reusable takeaway containers. And so, um, the city is uh, completely on board with highlighting uh, restaurants that are using that company, but also looking at other things that restaurants are doing to try to reduce the amount of waste that's generated through, through their restaurants. So that's something um, that I passed over to the working group. Just again, it's a, it's a complicated topic, waste management, as Kate knows very well, but any uh, streamlining or clearing of confusion that we can accomplish is very helpful. Um, I saw Emily's hand up and then Anna. Yeah, I'm wondering if Anna and I have a similar question for Sammy. Um, as far as the um, webinar or the potential webinar, is that something that you're thinking of for like the end of this calendar year? Or are we talking about the new year? Or have you guys not got that far yet? Uh, we were just hoping that you guys would kind of uh, put, like kind of work with us to put that, that together. We didn't really talk about dates yet because I know that the Carbon Reduction Working Group kind of was putting together a calendar of what they wanted, kind of have like ideas when they wanted what happening. So I think it'd be up to you, but again, we'd be happy to get it out as soon as possible to try and help clear it up. Um, well, maybe we should think about that for November and it gives us chance, it would give us, I mean, it's been on the list as a possible webinar from the very beginning. So um, I don't know what others think, but maybe that would be a good thing to do in November and give the committee a chance or the working group a chance to work with Amara and lay out the webinar idea is going forward. Um, so maybe if it's if we think we could do it and do it well in November, maybe we should think about doing that toward the end of November, maybe. As our and, and we won't 
likely have one in October. I mean, I mean, maybe we could get it together for October. I don't know how hard it would be to pull the people together, but we have, at the moment we don't have anything scheduled for October. So, um, Kate, are there any uh, waste management weeks or months in October or November? Yes. Waste Reduction Week is, I think it's um, October 25th, the week of the 25th. I'm not looking at, a, at the, the email just yet, but um, yeah, that would be a perfect, perfect time for yeah. a webinar. Um, just to, to add to, to Sammy's um, information, so Storm Fisher did reach out to me today, or sorry, responded back today to say that, yeah, he would definitely be interested in, in participating in a webinar. Um, and Blue Water as well, he has already done a webinar as Sam, Sammy has uh, uh, pointed in that direction as well. Um, <clears throat> and that's on a, oh, he sent me a link to it. I'm so sorry. South Perth or uh, their, their website. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they, uh, both, both those options are uh, definitely interested in participating. Hmm. Do we think we could get it together by waste reduction week, like on the Wednesday, or I can't remember, we'll be doing it on Thursdays, I can't remember. It, would, do you think there's time to get it together for waste reduction week? Yeah. Okay, well, let's do it. Okay, well, we'll call our group together and Sammy um, find a time we can all talk about it and get it going. Maybe you could join us, Kate. Great. Excellent. Okay, there we go. We have another webinar planned. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that is, was that everything, Sammy, in terms of the ICI Waste Reduction Committee or Working Group? Okay. So, business arising, oh, no, uh, sorry, update from, <laughs> update from attack from Anna. Um, they met earlier this month primarily to set their budget. Uh, so they met early in September. So that the discussion was primarily around setting the budget for the coming year. However, uh, Jody presented this marvelous thing, which they've done their report card on all the active transportation uh, aspects in the city. And over time, I think it started in 2016 your base and then but it's a wonderful chart being worked on about all the um, elements of active transportation and then looking at you know where they were in 2016 and where they are um, today and I think one in, intervening in 2018 or 2019 and I thought if it were something that could be shared it might be something that um, e and &E might want to look at too in terms of creating a report card it's a it's a very impressive piece of work, I would say. Who is it that um, updates the report card? Jody. Oh, Jody? You, oh you, you yourself update it? Well, I uh, volunteer to create it. So uh, like picking what data we wanted to add to the report card. And then, so the idea is to get a quick snapshot of you know, one po or different points in time and then see the progress. So mm -hmm. it's to kind of, it, it also to help staff to say like, these are our priorities for active transportation. You know, the, how, how many bike lanes, like how many kilometers of bike lane and how many, and have we made any progress? Like we put some budget towards it. What did it get us? And so I think it's a great idea for e and &E too. It's, it's a bigger topic, the environment, but mm -hmm. you know, you could, hone in on certain things like well the biggest one is going to be carbon reduction right that's mm -hmm. uh, the, that could be the focus a carbon reduction report card but yeah I, I, so getting the data i basically reached out to different staff members uh, the police and different folks to get the initial information and actually it's that um kind of baseline information that's a little harder you got to dig around once that's set up then you can make it like every year we'll just measure the progress. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, 
it's been uh, it's been a project. It's it's been fun, a lot of work. Well, I know that um, Councillor Vasilakis was talking about the how useful it would be to have a report card attached to the climate action plan. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So similar idea, right? That we just need to pick. What do we want to track? What do we want to follow? Is it the climate action plan? Are there is it you know are there certain talking points on that? Yeah, and it does make it much easier for citizens then to also engage, right? To say, hey, you know, in the last however many years, we haven't done it. We haven't made much progress over here. So, you know, maybe we need to shift priorities. Um, and it's great for council too, of course. Right. Yeah, so I would think that that would make a lot of sense for the climate action plan versus maybe the E and E committee, because our work is so varied. You know, like the climate action plan will have clear targets or clear um, measurables. So you're thinking build a, a, the report reporting back aspect into the actual plan, saying this is one of our objectives to make sure we have reporting every year on the progress at least every year and i think that that's what kathy was including as well was the suggestion that there be regular updates on the progress and that it come through e and e right yep that makes sense so we'll just add that as a component to the climate action plan yeah okay <laughs> great <laughs> decision made Okay, um, so that, Anna, that was the, was that the full update from my TAC? Okay, great, thank you. So business arising from previous minutes. The budget update, thank you to those who submitted invoices on uh, behalf of the work being carried out for our committee. The remaining uh, amount that we have left, according to Casey, is $1,257 that we need to spend or could spend by the end of the year, I should say. Um, I think I heard a rumor that there may be an idea of um, a project with some budget attached to it. So uh, let me just check the, where is that under? Um, Sammy, weren't you, wasn't there something you wanted added to the agenda? Something about, the, yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna turn it to you within this discussion of the budget, okay? Okay, thank you. Um, so the youth, uh, the SDSS Eco Club, so Stratford District, um, we have for the last, we started in maybe February, um, of last year, um, planning a reforestation project. And the student who was leading that project, unfortunately has graduated. So we've taken that on and we've renamed it the naturalization project. Um, it consists of multiple phases. The first one being to plant lots of trees and native flowers, perennials, and put mulch around those trees um, in our front yard where the portables used to be, if you look now, they're not um, the most, it's not the most beautiful landscape um, since the portables did kind of wreck the grass in the yard. So it's, it's not looking great right now, but we're hoping through this naturalization project to re-naturalize the front yard and use um, native species as well to support um, pollinators as well as hopefully it just becomes a sustainable area. Um, so this first project, we recently submitted a grant application for the Youth in Action grant from the United Way. Um, but again, this is a pretty large project. Um, so we're hoping, um, again, we aren't sure if we get that grant or not, but we are hoping to continue as well um, by purchasing some benches as, as well as plants to go in this area. So we were wondering um, if Annie &E could help us financially or fund this project um, in some future phases um, to hopefully help us renaturalize the front yard. 
Okay, I see Bonnie's Bonnie with a V and then Bonnie with a. I thought we had talked about this and about putting a thousand dollars towards it, Sammy, back, oh, I don't know, in this winter or spring when you were talking about it. So yeah. I would make a motion to go along as long as the money goes towards native trees and, and flowers, wildflowers. Um, spending up to a thousand dollars, yeah, I, I would, yeah. You're right. We did talk about it. And we just kind of said we'll keep it on our radar and come right, back until when you, when you have like some uh, dollar dollar figures or something. Okay, so back to Bonnie and then Emily. I see your hand. The so two things. So Sammy, I'm assuming the school has no plans to ever put portables out there again because I thought short term they're setting it up like you know, high school at one place, seven eighths at another. And my understanding was they were gonna add maybe more schools later on. So as long as they don't need more portables. And another thing is to put a tip into your, um, when you're looking at buying benches, not that I'm promoting CRP plastic, but they use recycled plastic and they're comfortable to sit in. You never have to paint them. They're easy to wash and they only run around 500 bucks like the metal ones we buy in the city are over 2000, right? So, and they need painting every, I don't know, seven or eight years. So it, it's just something to think about. And they come in different lengths, like four or five and six. And they also sort of um, are good height for people that have accessible issues and stuff. So it's just something to think about. And they also have, if you're ever looking at picnic tables, they make, you know, if you get the ones that are made in Market Square, chairs can actually go under them. They, they made them specifically for us because the accessibility committee didn't like the tables they were making originally because you really couldn't get your wheelchair on because you wouldn't be able to eat at the table, right? So just a little tip. So Bonnie, you didn't disclose any pecuniary interest at the beginning of the meeting. So I'll take your word for it that you're not a CR Plastics. No. <laughs> representative. Okay, Emily. Yeah, it sounds like we have just over a thousand left in the budget, right? Um, it's also um, from our discussion like 10 minutes ago, sounds like we might have at least one more webinar um, for the carbon reduction working group before the end of the year. I don't think that we've actually really had to give anybody in um, the honorarium, um, but just putting that out there, um, should we consider maybe holding back a little bit of money in case there is anything for the webinar I think Anna can probably speak to that more than I can but we we did spend we um we did give some honorariums and bought some chocolate and um, so if we had uh there's 1258 dollars left so a thousand to Sammy's initiative would still leave 250 plus I don't imagine we would spend that much but we may want to give I don't I don't know whether the people speaking on waste would expect something, but maybe a little gift or no, they wouldn't. So uh, 250 in the pot would be lots if we do something in October and, and possibly November too, I think. Mike, Jorna. Uh, question to Sammy, uh, on this project of naturalizing the, uh, the front of the property of the school, uh, would your group be interested in forming a community partnership? And the reason I say that is I'm chair, environment chair for the Kiwanis Club of Stratford. And we are just now starting to look at potential projects for next year in that regard. And uh, we can spring for some budget, but I don't know if you're interested at all in joining with any other organization for doing what you're doing and you should check that out with your group and then get back to me. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it would definitely be pretty cool for us to partner. I'm just not sure how the logistics of that would work through the school board. Yeah. Um, if I, I'd have, I definitely have to bring that up with them. We're yeah. hoping to have a meeting with um, the school administration to discuss what the details are and what we actually, what we're allowed to do. Um, because they do dictate um, what our project can consist of. Um, so I can definitely bring up the idea of partnerships. Well, it's just a germ of an idea for now. Uh, the Kiwanis Club 
fits into these things because it exists to look after the interests and the future of young people. And it also exists as part of that initiative for environmental improvement. So I thought if your group and potentially the board would be interested in that, I could see a great partnership forming. But we'll wait and see. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I was going to mention um, Don McFarlane, who's with um, Anita. Will you help me out? Is he with Stratford Field Naturalists? I always confuse that and Master Gardeners. Yeah, I think uh, Don Farwell. Um, yes, Farwell. What did I say, McFarlane? But yeah. I don't know who. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Uh, Don Farwell is with uh, Stratford field naturalist, right? I think he's also in the Hort Society as well. So, yeah. so he's expressed interest in terms of uh, partnering with E&E &E, um, on tree planting and uh, pollinator gardens or pollinator pathways. So another potential community partner. Mike Sullivan. I'm seconding Vani's motion. Good, that's good. <laughs> Okay, uh, Sammy and then Bonnie. Um, the only thing would be that we can't guarantee that $1,000 will be spent um, within 2021 because with the winter coming, we can't really like put a lot of things in the ground in the middle of winter. Um, so we have put together our plan. We're hoping to, if we do get the grant from United Way, that money is going to go towards um, getting the seeds for the perennials that the green industries course is going to start in the greenhouse, um, as well as some of the trees that are going to go in the front area. Um, but again, that can't really be put in the ground until the spring. So this money would also be for um, any additional plants or maintenance or even uh, benches as well. So I can't guarantee that we could spend that money within the 2021 deadline. I wonder if there's a way that we could kind of park that money with someone that might be able to source wildflowers in 2022 and looking specifically at Bonnie, because maybe it would, it might be possible to partner with Upper Tens on that. And then in, so that we don't lose the money this year that we work out um, an arrangement with upper tents for the money and then get the wildflowers next year. And the trees, if you want. Trees, yeah, if we can find them. Yeah. Um, I so think- know now. Uh, Bonnie, did you have your hand up? Yes, but I've changed my mind. Okay. Um, so any other questions or comments about that? We do have a motion. Oh, Sammy? Um, sorry, I was just wondering, so that motion that is on the table, the $1,000, would that, like, is there a way that we could kind of hold that some way so that we can, like, spend it in 2022, or do we have to kind of? Bon I see Bonnie shaking her head. It has to be invoiced by the end of December. I'm pretty sure Casey, or it has to be into finance for there. Um, if there's any trees. Like, I think most of the tree planting in, um, is going to be done soon because you can plant apparently in the spring and the fall. And, oh, I know what I was going to say before is um, when you're looking for community partners and people that want to plant trees, Quinn Malott would be a good person to talk to because people are always contacting his department and volunteering. So if we need some extra help or you, anybody that's looking at things like that, it's best to work with Quinn. So then does it make sense to, well, really we're saying we'll spend up to a thousand on this project within 2021, if we find a way to make that work, right? And if we don't, then we don't spend the money and yeah, right? Okay, I see Casey uh, nodding and shaking her head, which means I am correct. <laughs> so, okay, so we have the motion seconded. So all in favor? 
And I think I, yep, I saw everyone's hand. So that is carried. And then- So Pat then do you want, do you want to be invoiced? And then the upper tens holds the money and then Sammy, when you're ready, we send it. Do we want to check with the board with that? Check, oh, check with the school board? The school board, yeah. I mean, I think so, but. So Upper Thames would hold that money until. You need we... it in 2022. Yeah, so you would essentially prepay Upper, or we would prepay um, Upper Thames for up to $1,000 of wildflowers and trees, knowing that they won't be um, sourced and delivered until 2022 when you're ready to plant. Would it be all right to use that money as well for other things or just those trees and flowers? What kind of other things? Um, potentially like those benches, just because uh, we're just thinking if the grant does come through as well, again, that's uncertain, it might not, um, but we also will have that uh, source for the trees as well. So mm -hmm. um, we could, is just clarifying the money from e, e just for flowers and plants and stuff? So that I will defer to Casey because I know um, there are restrictions on how our committee can spend funds. Yeah. Sammy, if you get $1,000 from the city, is it possible to, like, since it's not a planting, like if you were going to go ahead and order a bench or benches, depending on the cost, could you buy them before the end of December and just store them? Um, I'm not sure yet. We're hoping to do this in phases. So the benches wasn't until all of the trees and mm -hmm. things were planted. So um, we definitely can, the $1,000, if it is for trees and plants and things like that, we can definitely, it's not a, it's not a cheap pro, uh, venture. So we can find. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it's going to be something that can be invoiced to the city before December 31st, like benches or something, or Upper Thames for the purchase of trees and wildflowers, um, it would have to be a bill to them for that amount. They'd bill the city for that then. Okay, so we can, and that's okay if we don't spend it um, in 2021 because we can spend it um, in 2022, but then just invoice Upper Thames. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, technically you're, per you're gonna purchase the trees and the wildflowers um, from Upper Thames to plant, but obviously they won't be able to put them in till the spring. Okay. So awesome. this is a way to make use of our remaining funds with timing that works with your project. Okay. Thank Mike you. Mike Jordan, I saw your hand up. Well, basically the easiest yeah. way to work this is to just as a committee commission a thousand dollars worth of trees, uh, much as Annie suggested. And uh, as long as the city is invoiced before the end of the year, I think they're perfectly happy if the delivery doesn't happen until it's appropriate in the spring. Yeah. Agree. Oh, Bonnie. $1,000 for trees, that would buy a lot of trees, right? No, not as many as you think. Well, Bonnie, I, I know we've just been doing trees. We're, like we're doing like 500 and how much was that well the the issue is is where we source the trees if we get them from our nurseries we can do wholesale right yeah so and we can talk about that sammy with uh miss ritzma so we'll do it we'll do the up to a thousand and i mean we 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 still have time to iron out details yeah because this is October, so we have two more meetings before our budget has to be um, finalized. So we can get answers to some of those questions. And um, but for now, we have the motion passed that we will spend up to a thousand on this project. Okay. Um, where is my agenda? Here we go. Okay, so that is um, the budget. The next item is the land acknowledgement update. And I just reviewed our um, minutes from the last month's meeting. And really it said we were expecting an update, but expecting it to be the council in November. So I'm not sure that we need any, if there's anything else to add. 
Nope, nothing else to add. Same, yeah. same info. In timeline. Okay, yeah. and an update on John Street. We are so um, council has requested uh, upper 10's position about removal of the John Street Weir. So what will be happening is um, upper 10's is taking a report to their board for the month of November. And then we will, um, so they'll do a report uh, to their board, which will then be presented back to council once approved. And so then we will hear um, about the next steps that council has decided to take on that project. Uh, Bonnie? I had a question. That flooding we just had recently, did that, with the John Street, where without it being there, I mean, I don't think it's working anyway right now, but would that have any influence on the flooding that happened like downstream, like at the cemetery, et cetera? Um, I'm gonna turn it to Craig. Your question was if the John Street Weir was removed, would there be an impact downstream? No, like we just had that flood and I, and I don't think the John Street Weir is working right now, right? So will we get a lot of opposition or people worried like that because it wasn't, we had that flooding, right? But I think we've had that flooding in other years. So yeah, I don't know if that's part of what we're proposing. I know Jody had brought up about, you know, doing a pedestrian walkway across it. And, and I'm, I'm not sure if I'm being very clear with my ask yeah. here, but. Well, the bottom, the bottom line is that the John Street Weir has no function uh, from a flood control standpoint. It's just strictly there for to back up a bit of water. So there's some ponded water behind it for recreational purposes. So there's no, no flood uh, control issue with it at all, or function rather. So it that's perfect be because, you know, my understanding is it's better that it's flowing there, healthier. Yeah, it is. Yeah. For the record, Craig, that's the answer I was going to give to. So I could read your mind. I learned a lot on that site visit. Um, okay, so that's the John Street. We are any other questions about that? Wait and see. And green parking spots. This is Mike Sullivan. I will turn it to you. So on the uh, uh, I sent around to all of you an article from the city Toronto Star about the notion that cities should encourage um, through its parking levies, the adoption of cleaner vehicles. Um, and there were, the examples given were all over the, the world, but including in Montreal. Um, Toronto has not yet done something like this, but it certainly is thinking about it. So I would move that we recommend to the city that parking rates for green plated vehicles be reduced or eliminated to encourage adoption and to follow the polluter pay principle. And if the city needs examples of, um, of other cities that do similar encouragements for electric vehicles, then um, I can provide that. The, um, there is no pecuniary interest here because I'm no longer driving an electric vehicle. It's in the shop for many months. Well, thank you for clarifying um, <laughs> and shedding light on that. That doesn't sound good. Uh, Emily. Yeah, um, I think that this could be something that we could um, work with potentially putting a motion forward with after we get the climate action plan. Um, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Um, but like from what we've heard from the other cities in those past webinars, transportation tends to be a really big contributor to city greenhouse gases. So I think we might be able to kind of marry this idea with the climate action plan and maybe some potential um, motions or projects that we can put forward. So I would maybe suggest holding off on this idea or like making a decision on a motion for this until after we get the climate action plan. Because we might be able to have a little bit more teeth once that's presented to council too for a motion like this. Uh, Bonnie and then Jody. I just sent you all the link to the climate action report that's coming to council on Tuesday. And I put you the page numbers and everything and what 
committee it's in. So. so we can read this before the end of our yeah, meeting? It's posted on the city website already. Yep. It's not actually as long as you might think. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I was just going to add to the discussion about the parking, uh, the green parking spaces. We did have a discussion this summer at council about uh, there was a grant project, so I don't even know if we successfully applied for it to, to install charging stations. And we had the discussion around making the charging free. Um, not necessarily just parking spaces alone, but the charging spaces. So we may want to think about the motion, like, do we want to make the charging free or just the parking part? Because that there's sort of a two pronged question there. Because typically, when somebody's driving an electric car, we we want them they they're going to want a parking spot that they can charge up. So uh, just food for thought. Hey, Bonnie, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I would agree with Emily that see how this, the climate action plan, and let's go from there. Sammy? Um, I was just wondering if somebody could clarify the motion on the table or the discussion. I My Wi-Fi cut out and I got lost. <laughs> Mike? Well, there's been no seconder, so there's no real motion on the floor. And the suggestion, the, the motion was about uh, charging less or nothing for green vehicles to park in the city of Stratford. Um, but the suggestion from members of the committee is that we wait on that until after we're having discussions about the climate action plan and perhaps marry it to the reaction to the climate action plan. Uh, Mike Jorna. I would uh, second that and ask that it be referred to the climate action plan for their consideration. But uh, to clarify the other question that was asked, I would think that it should be for actual parking spaces, Jody, rather than the charging function, because most people driving electric cars have a two to 300 kilometer range and are not going to need the downtown charging devices uh, for any, any great demand, but a lot of them just might want their parking spaces. Uh, Mike Sullivan. Um, I have to agree with Mike. The uh, provision of charging in the city of Stratford is is not um, something that people will go looking for. Um, people who own uh, electric vehicles, if they are coming from away, a like the city of Toronto to Stratford, they will want a level three charge, not a level two. And the only charging stations the city of Stratford has are level two. Level three is something that was being put in by uh, the previous Liberal government. It, they, they no longer work and the company that put them in and got eleven and a half million dollars to do it seems to have just abandoned them. They're just, they're, there's one at each of the Scotiabanks and so, or the Scotiabank downtown and the Scotiabank on Lorne um, and they don't work and so um it's the provision of level two charging especially when it it's going to take you 12 hours to charge your car you're not going to pay 12 hours to park to charge your car in the city of stratford because that's not uh cost or time effective if there was a level three charging station in the city of stratford people would flock to it because um, there you can charge your car 80 percent in an hour so while you're um, shopping or going to the theater, you can get your get back to Toronto in your car. Um, but Stratford doesn't have any of those, nor is there any plan to put any in, as far as I know, other than the two that um, that company that doesn't seem to be there anymore put in. So uh, I think we have to be careful when we attach a value to uh, the charging station. Sure, it's nice to, I've used it, it's nice to plug in, but it doesn't really get me anywhere. Uh, it's, you're, you can't be there long enough to make a real difference in the driving capability of the car. Yeah, so we did have a discussion around that um, because we were put, we were applying for funding to get some of those stations put in. So we had a level two versus level three. Do we make people pay? We had the, the conversation, but it hasn't progressed. I mean, I'm assuming that staff put in the application for the funding. So we would love to have those faster charging stations, but 
um, it'd be nice if another level of government paid for it. I didn't know that there were different levels of chargers, I'll be honest. What about if you had the, the like downtown accommodations? Would it make sense for them to have the, I mean, the, it seems like what is wanted is the level three, the faster, but if you had an accommodator with a level two and you're staying overnight, would that be of use? And a couple of the hotels do have them. Yeah. They, they, oh, yeah. They're, they're, not, they're not everywhere. The and primary. they are level two and and that would be perfect you charge overnight and you're ready to go back but if people are making day trips to the city of stratford from uh from detroit or from toronto or even a little further west they need to be able to refill their electric car here in stratford and they can't um and so they would drive back down to the 401 and look for one there so you're adding another hour to your trip right. um anyway uh maybe we can have a more fulsome discussion when we're talking about parking in the context of the um, climate action plan in whatever meeting we have a discussion of the climate action plan because we're not going to have one between the time it's presented to council and the time council decides on it um bonnie i see your hand up Mike, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to go see the chair to you. Um, I'm kind of curious because when I'm downtown, I see cars parked in all the time at Market Square. I don't see it as often in Upper Queens Park. I have the odd time, but actually it was broke for a while. I don't know if they got it fixed or not. I think there was in the budget to replace it. Um, but why would people bother to plug in then? You know? At all? I'm going to unmute here. Trying to unmute. Um, the reason people use it is because it's free. There's no charge by the city of Stratford for that. So why wouldn't you put, uh, you know, five percent of your electrons necessary into your car when the city is giving it to you for free? You just can't um, come to Stratford, go to a play, and charge your car in that same amount of time. You, it's not. It's not possible. It's certainly possible for residents. City. I've done it. It's also um, handy in some uh, places in that only green vehicles are allowed to park in those spots. So when there is a scarcity of parking spots and you have an electric car, you can actually find a place to park, whereas you might not if you don't have an electric car. But those are the, those are the kind of ins and outs of electric car driving around the city. Emily. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up with my earlier comment about maybe holding off. I don't think we necessarily have to hold off. I just um, was, I guess, putting the idea out there that maybe the motion would have more teeth if we're making reference to the climate action plan before we put it through council. Um, I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't actually know whether or not that's true. Um, so, I mean, I'm comfortable also like putting the motion forward but I do think if we can reference it when we put it in front of council like as identified in climate action plan per this action like this is tackling that um I don't know if any of the council members would say that it would be best to wait until we can reference the climate action plan if that would give it more teeth or if there's no harm in putting it forward sooner I saw nodding from Jody and I see Mike Jorna's hand is up. Now, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, my seconding of Mike Sullivan's motion was with the provision that it be referred to the Climate Action Plan for their consideration. And then with the strength of both this committee and Climate Action Plan should it pass at both levels, I think it would then have a stronger stand at council. So I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads. So um, just an informal vote. Do we want to hold off on this motion until uh, we have the details of the climate action plan? You can raise your hand if you want to hold off. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, Mike, you don't want to hold off? Mike Jorna? I, I, want, I want to refer it to climate action. I want so, us to. I want us to say what we think is a good idea and send that on to climate action for their consideration. So do you mean- Rather than the council. 
for now. Should you, should you mean to send on to Amara, who's working on the climate action plan, or Chris at the city, who's working on the climate action plan? I don't know who's working on it. Yeah. I know the concept. Bonnie? Um, I'm wondering, <coughs> like this, this is going to come up quite a bit, I would think, over the next couple of years. I'm wondering if we should reach out to Mara and ask how she'd like to handle that. Like, can we just send um, the ideas we're talking about to her or should we have her as part of our meeting for say 10 or 15 minutes each month um, going forward? Because then she can hear, like we learned a lot from Mike today, at least I did about electric cars and charging stations and that, I don't know. You know, maybe we should just reach out and ask her how she'd like to handle it. Like the first we meet the first Thursday of the month at four, we could have her near the top of our agenda if she wants to be able to pop in and, you know, like Kate comes in and, and gives us information and, I mean, you know, it's just, we're working on it, so. Yeah, um, so we have invited her to the November E, e meeting. It was, as you recall, originally going to be this meeting, but of course the climate action plan hasn't been presented to council. So um, I think uh, what I told Chris at the city in terms of what we're hoping to get out of our discussion with Amara at the November meeting uh, was kind of ironing out those details. Um, my hope is that we'll all have seen her presentation to council beforehand so that we can be prepared and have specific questions for her one of them being moving forward how can we be the best asset to you and like you said pass motions that will support the work that she's trying to do through the climate action plan we also have to keep in mind like her contract is not very long um so we need to have measures in place to continue the progress uh if her contract ends, if it doesn't get renewed, right? So I think that's something we should keep in mind and ask her next next month, whether it be regular regular meetings with us at the beginning, like you say. Sound good, Bonnie? Uh, Jody? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I don't know if you wanted to really talk about this now, but I'm gonna bring it up. Uh, so the report that you all received uh, is that they're still working on the climate action plan um, and the request is for council to set uh, a carbon reduction target uh, without necessarily staff recommendation on it and just leaving it to council and the plan itself hasn't really been finished. So what I'm saying is that I think now is a great time to gather up our, all our ideas and make sure that they get into that plan. So for, for our purposes, if this is something that we think is going to help us get towards that target, then that's great. Like even if we can, uh, you know, any, anything that would convince council as well that, you know, there are a lot of things we can do. So we should go for, you know, a 30% reduction, because there's a whole pile of ideas that we have here that could help us reduce carbon. So I don't know if I'm making sense, but I, I think now's the time, strike well, the iron's hot, it's the, the plan isn't done. So it's, we still have a chance to influence it. And if it's in the plan, then I would say, yes, it does have a, a much greater chance of, of, you know, going beyond this council to the next one and making sure that you know, it's uh, along with um, having some sort of reporting system that things mm -hmm. are getting done. So we want to make sure all our good ideas are going to get in that plan. So on that note, Jody, I reached out to Chris at the city to ask, because um, you'll all recall that we worked on the community ideas of how we can work at reducing our GHG emissions in each of the three sections so transportation, residential, waste um but i asked chris because i was unclear about if those were being included in the climate action plan i haven't heard back from him yet um but prior to oh, was this prior to 
COVID, I don't know, but originally the, the intention was certainly that the ideas that were brainstormed by the volunteer group and then approved by this committee were going to be included on the community side of the climate action plan. Um, so I'm hopeful that that is still the case. And like I said, I haven't heard back from Chris yet about um, whether they're being included. Um, I, I, I just want to put it out there that we now know it's the October 12th, October 12th meeting where council's being asked to adopt a, a target, to finalize a target, right? Um, and we're obviously meeting today. So I wonder if it makes sense for our committee to reiterate the previous motion that we made about the target that we think it should be 30% below 2017 um, levels and that the climate action plan be finished and adopted ASAP. And then also again, another uh, motion that we made in the past was that uh, the city devotes resources to additional staff to be responsible for carrying out um, a climate action plan, reporting back on it, you know, working with all the different departments um, at implementing these changes. So I'm seeing Sammy's hand up. So I will pass it to her. But because that was a lot of info. Um, yeah, to my understanding, I thought the actual plan was being presented on the 12th. So I think I'm I'm very confused right now because I thought the plan was finished and it was being presented. Uh, I thought the target was coming as a separate thing. So I was wondering if somebody could clarify what's being presented to who and what's being decided on the 12th. Jody, can I put you on the spot for that? Yeah, I was just, uh, I don't have it on my other screen, so I can't read. So I, I did, I sped read through it because I saw it earlier this afternoon. Um, yeah, so I, I think because we have a new person on staff, I, I'm guess I don't even, I don't know the reasoning. I, I thought, like you, Sammy, I thought we were going to get the report as one thing that we were going to accept or look at at least. And then the second thing would be setting the target. But basically it's saying there's a series of principles that we're going to adopt, but it's not a plan. Uh, and then that the plan is still forthcoming but we need to set a target first so that then we can figure out what all should be in the plan, which does kind of make sense. Like you do, if you're gonna make a plan, you need to know what your goal is. So, you know, if we said, oh, 10%, then they don't need to put nearly as much in the plan, theoretically. Um, so I, yeah, so that, I hope that's helpful. I don't know. Um, yeah, because the last council meeting, or the last council meeting when they discussed the target, it was determined that there's a lot of different numbers floating around out there and council, I think rightfully said, please come back to us with a more clear outline of our options. So what staff has done has said, here's what 10%, 20 and 30 would mean in terms of how many um, tons, GHG tons would be removed. And then like Jody said, from there, you build the climate action plan to meet those targets. Back um, to Sammy. Sorry. Um, I'm just looking at the link that Bonnie sent. Um, it says, it talks about a motion that the presentation by Mara Kartik is heard. And then below that, um, it says motion by blank, staff recommendation that the greenhouse gas reduction plan be adopted. So you have to go to page 22 to read the report. Okay. And, and so, I don't know. I haven't read it myself yet. I just quickly scanned when we were talking about it today to find so, it. Yeah, it may be the difference in a report is a different thing than the actual plan itself. So we're just, we're, we're going to accept a report saying that they haven't made the plan yet. But it also includes um, the update on the idling bylaw because staff was working on that. Okay, um, Mike Jorna and then Mike Sullivan. 
Uh, just a question. Did I fall asleep here or did we drift away from Mike's and my motion a long ways? Um, no. <laughs> Wait. Uh, we all, didn't we all raise our hands saying that it made sense to hold off and include it within the climate action plan? I and then you. Nodding. I didn't see any hands. Yeah. There were hands. There were, yeah. there were hands, Mike. We did that. All right. Um, Fell asleep then. Well, we really <laughs> just nodded. <laughs> I called in an unofficial vote. Uh, I'm, I'm really worried about this. Uh, yeah. The, the, um, uh, the report uh, gives council what it asked for, which is how many tons of greenhouse gases is 10%, 20%, and 30%. Um, and then it, the, uh, the bottom of that report says, uh, the staff recommendation is that the greenhouse gas reduction plan be adopted. And then the plan follows. It's the, the greenhouse gas reduction plan. There isn't another plan. It isn't a plan in, in the works. This is done. And my understanding was that this was being presented to council on the 12th and that council would make a decision on the 25th. Now, if I'm if I'm wrong about that, that's because I'm not paying close enough attention to to the machinations of council. But this plan is done, and we, as a uh, committee, are not going to have an opportunity to study it, to re to review it, to uh, make comments on it, to make amendments to it, to suggestions. It's this is what council is going to be voting on before our next meeting, unless we decide to have a meeting between the 12th and the 25th. Bonnie? I have to go back on my notes, but I kind of thought um, the other girl had done a presentation of the plan, but, but we were discussing a council about what percentage, because I remember bringing up, why are we using 2017? Because we actually started reduction way back when. And I see on the chart that's coming to council, some of them use the 2011, because we would actually have a, higher percentage of reduction if we didn't start at 2017 because we already did a bunch of stuff like we had done the island bylaw in 2001 we did some well different i forget all the things like um the dufferin arena and um, when they built the rotary complex there was different measures put in to help reduce greenhouse gases and different things and there's other projects i think they done at the landfill and you know, and around the city, like the green bin and all the different things that we've done. The, they're, well, not the green bin, because it's just recent. But I mean, all those things that we did before 2017 aren't included, which when we were definitely having a lot more greenhouse gases. But I mean, they were, my understanding was they were supposed to bring it back, that it was sort of correlate with back then at the 2000 rates. And that's 2017 rates. And that's why we could, sort of go with a lower number because we're actually going with a higher number in a way because we've already started reduction. I'm, I'm not explaining this very well. I can see Mike going, what the heck is he talking about? But, I mean, but like Bonnie, I think it's confusing how the different communities are doing it when they don't, you know. Well, and, that, and that's partly what why council asked for staff to come back with this comparison of what other communities are doing and what target year they're selecting in the percent. But I think the target was important, but I thought we had adopted the plan already. Not like that I have, have ever seen. I've I thought I thought Chris sent it to us all a long, like a long time ago. But that he sent one through a draft to the committee that we looked at and but that, that hasn't come. but that hasn't gone to council. Jody, do you remember? Did it not come to council when we were originally asked staff to come back with the percentage and then the coordinator left and so it got on put on hold and now the new one's here? And... Yeah, okay. So what I'm thinking, and I may be wrong, I don't know, this, this overarching plan for Perth County is quite general and doesn't have targets and specific, but that we were in the city of Stratford working on our own climate action plan for our own municipality. So this overarching plan, like plan is, I, I'm just, I'm even trying to find any 
any targets or goals in it. Like it's a long document. So I haven't rooted all the way through it. So I guess from my perspective, I feel like Stratford doesn't have a plan. This is a Perth County overall plan, but we need our own specific goals and like t target and our own climate action plan. That's And that's what we were working on with staff. So there is information there that's sort of been compiled. So it, it is confusing. So I don't, I'm, I'm assuming, which maybe is a bad thing that there will be a plan created. That's when I read the report, it was like, we're still working on a, a Stratford specific plan. That's the way I read it, but maybe I'm misinterpreting. And I did read it really quick, so. That's how I interpreted it also, Jody. Uh, Mike Sullivan, I saw your hand up. So the plan that is attached to the motion uh, that has been prepared by staff for the city is dated August of 2021. And it's written by both um, Rebecca Garlick and Amara Kartik. Um, it's, it's new in that sense. It's not, not been presented to council because it was only developed in August of 2021. And so uh, I'm a little concerned that I, I understand what you're saying, Jody. that this is, it, it is very general and it is very unspecific to, uh, to any, any one community. It just says it's be, it'd be good to do things. It'd be good to, uh, and these are the kinds of things you can do. But um, I have yet to see anything from the city of Stratford saying we are now creating our own uh, climate change plan or, or reduction plan. And uh, yet here's the one that we're going to adopt. And once it's adopted, then what? If we, uh, it, it, it might just be a number. And if it's just a number and there's no um, underlying uh, actions, which is what we really want in a climate action plan is actions, um, then we don't really have anything. And I'm, I'm very concerned that we as a uh, energy and environment committee aren't gonna get a chance to say anything about this because this, this is our last meeting before council adopts something. Jody and then Sammy and then Bonnie. Yeah, from my, what I remember when we declared a climate emergency, it was a two part we, that we were going to set targets uh, and that we were going to create a plan around it. So in my mind, this, this plan is, is sort of a different project that was undertaken along with with Perth. So um, because Perth County, I don't think they've declared a climate emergency. I'm not sure. Um, but we have. So we had we had a specific motion with those two directives in it. So I would say that we still are required to create our own plan. But um, yeah, that's my understanding. But I'll look into it more. And uh, I mean, I'll do everything I can to make sure that that actually happens. And there has been work done towards it, which we saw We saw some preliminary work from, from Chris Bantock and um, not, but not from the climate coordinator who's specifically employed by all the municipalities. So the city staff has been doing our own work, but we would like to have somebody to, to sort of take that file on because the clerks are busy with all kinds of other things. So this is us off the side of the desk kind of project. So, you know, our goal is to have somebody specific who would a, a create a plan or, or pick up where staff has already, you know, got us to at the, to this point and then be able to execute. So yeah, it, it, it is complicated. And I would, I wouldn't be happy to see this plan just taking over anything that the city itself would be making. Do you know where I think there's some confusion coming is our committee asked for the idling bylaw to be revised and our committee, I believe, put forth the idea of adopting these um, green, I don't have the, it in front of me, but the like green living principles that are included in this report from Chris, I, 
the way I interpret it is it's not the climate action plan, but it, this is an update on these two things, asking council for the set target and then moving on and developing the climate action plan. Sammy and then Mike Jorna. Um, I'm staring at like the document Bonnie sent right now and I'm trying to muddle out what's gonna happen on Tuesday. Um, and the final thing at the bottom of the report is says that staff recommendation that the greenhouse gas reduction plan be adopted, that council provide direction on the setting of emissions reduction targets for the city of Stratford and that the city of Stratford adopt the one planet living principles. But looking at the greenhouse gas reduction plan that they want to be adopted, it doesn't really imply anything. It kind of just talks about, um, it talks about a reduction targets, but it doesn't specifically say, we want Stratford to have this one. It just kind of goes around and says, we could do this. Here's some things other places are doing, but it doesn't actually say, we want this to be Stratford's target. There's no line. That's Sammy, that's because staff is asking because at the last meeting where it was discussed, council said, come back to us with more details. Staff is saying, here are the more details. We need a set target. Our committee has said 30% below 2017 levels, but council has not yet agreed on a set target. And that's what is supposed to be accomplished on Tuesday. Yeah, okay. So ITS is going to pass a motion uh, with a suggested reduction target to go to council. That's yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I'm out of order. I had Mike, Jorna, then Bonnie, then Jody, then Emily. <laughs> oh, with, with all due respect, I think that until council sets that goal and until council adopts what they see as their climate action plan, uh, because council is the ultimate authority on what this community is going to aim for in this very, very important initiative, I think we're spinning our wheels. And what we have to do is to wait for council to make up its mind on what the goal will be in which we've already made a recommendation. We're going to have to wait for council to look at the climate action plan, which is being presented to them shortly. And then there's going to be all kinds of work fall out of the, that decision. Uh, such as initiatives that will contribute towards it. Uh, staff are going to contribute towards it mostly by, <clears throat> excuse me, by quantifying how we're making our goals fit. So I, I think we should just let council do its thing next week and then decide next meeting on how we can best fit into that. Until then, I think we're really spinning our wheels. Uh, Bonnie was next, right? Yeah. Okay. So I just scanned through it. it. Goes from page 22 to 113, and it it's broke down by all the different, you know, transportation and all that. And it does actually have all our stuff in there. Like it's got the anti-idling bylaw. It's got all the different things in there. And now some of it's for Perthes too. But I would say it's because the whole report, the climate coordinator is in charge of Perth. County of Perth and Strawford, et cetera, right? So they've got all that in there. And then the very last chart, page 113 is Strawford, and it's got a broke down like what percentage right now is everything that is in Strawford. And so I, because I found this email from Chris Bancock from March um, the 8th, and it said, with respect to the climate change plan, Rebecca has confirmed that she plans to finalize this before her last day, we'll provide the staff to share with their respective councils. Once received, this will be placed on the agenda for further information at an upcoming regular council meeting. So I kind of thought that's what came. And at that discussion, I'll have to go back around March or April. I thought that's when we came back with, well, what is gonna be our percentage? And we had that discussion that I was talking about, right? And so I think that's where we're getting mixed up thinking it's going to be a completely separate plan. It's going to be one plan, but we're in it. 
and we're mentioned as one of the contributors, Energy and Environment. There's a list of all the different organizations that have contributed. I think we need to read it and have a look at it because like Jody said, she just briefly scanned it. I just scanned it while we're in this meeting. It's the first I, I didn't look at my council stuff yet. It was planned to do it on Sunday, but um, so I'm wondering if a lot of our stuff is in there. And so then we just have to let her know some of the breakdowns and what we're looking for. Like, you know, Mike's suggestion about the green cars and parking and, you know, things like that. Well, I think it'd be really useful to have had an opportunity to look at it prior to this meeting. Well, I think Kristen sent us out an email that it would be posted on the website by the 7th because I had asked him to have it sent to us ahead of time of our meeting. And then he said it would be there on the 7th. And sure enough, it was there this morning. So, but I mean, how many of us went on? I didn't. Well, so yeah, most of us have not reviewed it. So yeah, we didn't see it. Um, sure. I'm just wondering if um, if it makes sense to have another uh, meeting before the 12th with some of us or all of us to, after we've had a chance to read through it. Because, I mean, we're all so confused. <laughs> I don't even really know what we're talking about anymore. Mike Sullivan. So there is a paragraph in the staff report that suggests what's going to happen next. It says, following direction from Council on emissions reduction targets for the city, staff will work with the shared climate co change coordinator to review and create more specific action plans for the city based on action items from the greenhouse gas reduction plan. What is needed to re achieve our targets, specifics on how certain action items would contribute to emissions reduction in Stratford, and any resource or budgetary requirements or constraints that may be identified. Any action plans developed by staff will be brought before council for consideration and adoption to ensure local needs and priorities are being met. So uh, it would appear that the uh, report says, you pick a number, we'll come back and tell you in consultation with the soon to be no longer employed climate change coordinator, um, because I think her, her she ends the end of December, um, then uh, we will tell you how much money that would cost and what you should do with it. And that's where I guess we could get involved. Um, we've already recommended that it be 30%. And in response to Bonnie, who talked about um, why are other cities picking 2011 and 2012 and we're picking 2017, as you'll recall from my analysis of the city's original climate change plan in 2008, the city adopted a plan that uh, took advantage of the reduction of electricity from, uh, net, uh, from coal. And we got about 20, a 20% 20 reduction in some greenhouse gas emissions as a result of that. So we started the day 20% below without having to do any work. And then the city uh, took on a few projects, not very much. There isn't very much attached to, uh, with the exception of the methane capture at the landfill, the city hasn't really done very much in reducing its greenhouse gas emissions, which is why this committee thought 30% from 2017 was still an okay target. And given that the federal government is now saying 40 to 45% by 2013, 2030, uh, our 30% is small, um, given, given that. But that was based on my analysis of the 2008 report that this, the city was using. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Sammy, Emily, then Jody. Um, I just wanted to, I've, I scrolled a little bit farther than what I had on the document you sent, Bonnie. Um, and the plan, I thank you for Emily and trying to clarify and everything. Um, I'm looking at the document now and it does have, it's about an 81 page report. Um, and it talks about implementation strategies. It's divided into transportation, waste, agriculture, natural environment, buildings and land use, business and industry. 
So it's a lot more in depth than what I had thought. I'm not sure for those who don't have it pulled up in front of them. I just wanted to share that that there is a pretty large report uh, with some good solid uh, things in there. Um, I just for uh, at least I'm I was very confused. So I just for people who don't have that in front of them, I wanted to kind of clarify that. Yeah, I appreciate that, Sammy. I I just feel uncomfortable speaking to a a report that I haven't read through and deciding what we should do next. Like, to be honest, I'm frustrated by, um, by this process, Emily and then Jody. Um, yeah, Emily, you had brought this up actually um, when we first started talking about this and I think it's important. So I'm gonna bring it back up again. Um, the decision that they're making on the 12th is about which target to adopt. I know we've already recommended the 30%, but is there a motion or something that we can do to reiterate our position on that for that meeting? I see one person for it. You can guess who it is. That's, I mean, counselors may have, and I'm seeing Jody not as well, but to me, it seems like a good idea. And, and yeah, long story short. Okay, so okay. can I put forward the motion for, um, City Council to adopt E&E's recommendation for 30% below 2011 levels. Is that what we recommended? It was or? below 2017 levels by 2030 okay. and commit to being net zero by 2050 was our motion. Um, I don't have the original date that we that we made that, but it's quite a while Casey, ago. Do I have to repeat exactly word by word what Emily said? Or I can know? email it to Casey if you want. It's on the list of uh, motions. Yeah, we did that motion in March, word for word. So it's already been submitted to council. I'm just thinking it won't, I don't know that it would, this motion would make it in time to council for Tuesday. It's- Jody and myself will bring it up, don't worry. Okay. Okay, so that's a motion on the floor. I'm seeing Mike Sullivan seconding it. So we're just repeating the March one? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, any questions? Not, not to complicate things, but can we also add in the hiring of the, like, if we want to change the motion a little bit, can we do it by saying, like, hire in the, um, like, uptake the climate change coordinator or have a, a dedicated staff member to, like, um, so the wording, the wording that we had before was that council consider additional staff resources in a broader environmental coordinator type role to be responsible for implementation of the climate action plan. Okay, maybe we should keep them separate, actually, for now. Yeah, I would keep it separate. Sorry to no, that's <laughs> fine. take time. Yeah. Thank you for bringing it back up. So, okay, so let's deal with the first motion. We had it um, mentioned and seconded and any comments or can we vote on vote in favor of that? All in favor, all in favor of that. <laughs> okay. And who the, can you tell me who the mover and seconder was for that? Oh yeah, so that was Emily Skelding, the mover and Mike Sullivan was the seconder. And then the second one um, that Emily Skelding has made is the additional staff resource. I'm not sure, maybe I, I don't know, maybe I'll wait until after we do the reduction target to bring that one up at a, a following meeting instead of putting both forward. I would rather just maybe keep focused okay. on the target for this well, one. We're doing budget right now. I think we should bring it up right now. <laughs> okay, that's good to know, okay. Okay, so Emily, do you wanna have that motion then? Make that motion? Sure, so I put motion forward that we adapt or we adopt an environmental position to take on the climate action plan in the city of Stratford. The same motion that we've put forward before. Yeah. Okay, seconder, I saw Mike Sullivan, I believe, right? Yep. Um, any comments? Nope. All in favor? Great, thank you. Um, Okay, so then to get back to this report that's happening on the 12th, do we think the committee should have an extra meeting to discuss it after we've read it? 
looking to anyone to weigh in on that or do we feel okay with it um, in terms of having made those two motions? Sammy? Well, it looks like pretty, to me, it looks like it's pretty complete and put together. Again, I haven't read it, so I don't know what's in it, but even if we did read it through and meet, like, could we even make suggestions or is that point over? Jody? Oops, sorry. Um, yeah, so I, I want to make, I, <laughs> trying to clarify the mud here, but um, mm -hmm. if we look at the what this is named, it's called the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Plan. So that is different than our Climate Action Plan, which we just requested a staff member for. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to go out on a little limb and say, the Climate Action Plan is Stratford specific. The Greenhouse Gas Reduction Plan that we're gonna be presented on Tuesday, is the, the overarching one, which is, I think it's probably really good. I did see it in draft form. That's the one the climate coordinator made that's overarching for our area. So it, just to completely distinguish between those two, the climate action plan, as Chris Bantock had said in the report, is still in the works, like specific to Stratford, um, where this greenhouse gas reduction plan could be sort of an overarching, yeah, let's go this direction. Uh, that's sort of the way I interpret the two, right? This isn't, this greenhouse gas reduction plan isn't specifics. It isn't the actual, these are the, the action things that we can do. It's, this is more, here's our numbers. Like it was great because it's data collection, right? Which we didn't have a lot of the data before. So now at least we have the data, we've got baseline numbers. And we can use that then to reference our climate action plan, right? You can say, well, in the greenhouse reduction plan, we figured out that, you know, X, X, Y, Z numbers, and this is the direction we want to go. So I don't know if that helps to distinguish between the two, but my thoughts are that we need both, right? We need to adopt this one, which I don't think will be changed any from the way it is. Uh, and then, move on to create our own municipal climate action plan. <clears throat> so then the mo so you're saying that the Stratford specific climate action plan is not yet completed and being presented to council. So because there's a lot of information that we had worked on with the citizens group that isn't found anywhere that's been given to Chris and that you know it's it's starting to form into a plan, I think. I'm just hoping that didn't go into a void somewhere. I think that there is still, um, there's still traction there, there's still information. Once we set a target, then one of the things that I'm gonna ask about on Tuesday is, okay, so the next step here, now that we've set this target is our own municipal action plan. And then asking staff about that and what are the plans and, you know, the, those kind of things, like the next step, which I, I was under the impression that we were going to be at that place already, but we're yeah. not, so. But in light of that and your understanding then the motions that we just made are in line with where we're at realistically in the timeline and Strapper's Climate Action Plan is forthcoming. That's, that's my hope. That's how I see it. Um, so hopefully that's correct. Well, and I hope to have greater clarity once I hear back from Chris. I know he's, I know he's very busy, but once I hear back from him and actually have a chance to look at what was posted today. Hmm. Mike Sullivan. In, if I'm correct, and it's the 12th and the 25th, that it's going to be presented to council. They're not going to vote on it till the 25th. If that's the case, then um, the carbon reduction working group will actually be meeting, I think, Anna, correct me if I'm wrong, between now and the 25th. And I think the carbon reduction working group could analyze the, uh, the greenhouse gas reduction plan uh, put forward by the climate change coordinators and let the rest of you know if there's something really egregious in there that we should have a, an emergency meeting about. 
okay. because we, we are going to have another meeting anyway. Let's uh, use that opportunity to analyze and study what's being presented to council before they vote on it, I hope. But if they, even if it's after, we'll at least have an opportunity before our next meeting. Okay. Could I request an invitation to that meeting? <laughs> Yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. Bonnie? <laughs> I just want to make sure you understand that council will be voting on it at the infrastructure council committee. And then it will go in on the 25th, it will come to council. So there will be a vote, but it just it isn't the final vote at council. It's a sub it's a committee uh, vote. Yeah, right. It's confusing. It goes subcommittee. Council committee, then council. It is confusing. I remember when I first started as chair, I was like, what is this ITS everything is going to? <laughs> yeah, like there's five I'm still on it. <laughs> five committees of council. And then they have all the what 23 advisory boards, et cetera, and committees release them and they all report to different, whether it's community services, social services, or <laughs> ITS, you know, like that. So yeah. Our heritage, you know, it depends what it is. Just a point of process though, on Tuesday, we will be making the motion that then will go to the 25th and then we will vote on it. So as far as the reduction target, that's happening Tuesday. And we've set our piece on that. And yeah, hopefully that doesn't get referred again. Yeah, cause you know, we've declared a climate emergency. So one, may want to act with some sense of urgency. Yeah. Okay. Do we all feel okay having worked through that? I'm starting to feel a bit better. <laughs> yeah, I got some mics doing thumbs up. Anita, you have a question? Yeah, my, my question is to Jody. Um, you keep saying that the greenhouse action plan and the Stratford specific climate action plan are different. My question is, who is working on the Stratford specific climate action plan? This is a good question. Um, but yeah, Chris Bantock and the, the clerk's department is in charge of that. And I think they were getting some help from Rebecca, just asking her questions and stuff, but they were the ones compiling that. And then the information that came through this committee with the, like we took in all that information that the citizens group did and then passed that along that all landed with the clerks it with yeah. thought that they that would go into that specific plan so um in my mind that's still what has to happen so i'm going to work hard to make sure it does if i if i have anything to say about it same okay so i think that um, was new business. Well, we kind of jumped ahead, didn't we? Because I had it under new business and then Jody said, I'm gonna start this off. So, uh, but that's good. We obviously needed to cover that. So I'm just gonna circle back to 6F, um, a reminder of terms ending. Myself, Anna Stratton, Anita Jacobson, and Jeff, who's not here today. So uh, please complete your application forms and send them in to um, the city clerk. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Under new business, um, upcoming events. You all, it's not really an event, but just so you, oh, do you have an event, Anna, or something about your term ending? Oh, you've muted yourself. Uh, no, I know we're I, tired and I hate to be dropping this in, but Anne Carbert pointed out something to me this morning. She was reviewing the council minutes of, uh, I think it was um, June 26th and a discussion about um, some improvements in the airport and possible expansion of the airport and wondered and inquired, looked at Rebecca's uh, preliminary work and also spoke to Amara to find out whether the emissions at the airport were included in the overall um, the, uh, the overall uh, re work that they're doing that Rebecca and Amara were doing and apparently they're not. So she asked if I could bring this forward to the committee to inquire 
as to one, the if there is expansion of the airport, well, first of all, that the emissions, the airport be included in the emissions report, and that if, uh, and that and that and therefore with uh, any plans going forward would be part of the uh, um, climate action plan or whatever we're doing about reduction. So she just wanted to bring that forward. And I'm not sure where that goes or if something else has happened at the city, but she asked if I would bring that issue forward today. Right, because it's it's a city owned, um, not property, but asset, isn't it? So it should be included conceivably in the transportation part. Well, we, lease, we lease the land. We lease the land. The land, but it's city yeah. of Stratford Airport we're responsible for the expenses and all that yes well i think the emissions certainly the emissions there should be part of our overall overall emissions report and any uh, and what impact future expansion would have on emissions um so i'd so, prefer to send that but so is that maybe something to bring up with tomorrow when she comes to the november meeting yeah yeah, Jody and uh, yeah, okay. Let's make note of that. Okay, I'll 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 take note of it. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um. Okay. So then. Oh, right. Um. The report to council. So I. Yeah. The yeah report to council. I've sent it to around. Oh my gosh, around you guys. So, I'd like to submit that. Um to the city uh, by the end of tomorrow. So I haven't heard anything um, too major in terms of revisions, but I'll be doing that. Um, send me any notes if you have them before the end of tomorrow and I will do that. And upcoming events. So there's a tree trust event on October 16th at the Stratford Perth Museum, all about um, uh, how to maintain and protect our older trees and take care of them. Um, but there's a lot of uh, like family friendly activities happening. Mm -hmm. um, I will circulate the invitation. Registration is required because of COVID. Um, but that is the afternoon of October 16th. And also, uh, it's a ways away, but I can't remember if I mentioned that uh, Jody and I had a meeting. We were able to confirm tree power, Festival Hydro tree power for 2022. So that will be happening in April. I think it's around the 9th ish. So just um, hopefully this year we can actually have volunteers to help hand out the trees because last year we had to cancel that part. But really exciting that they're on board and really um, strong supporters of that program. And any other. <laughs> Any other upcoming events, Mike Sullivan? No. Okay, you're doing a motion to adjourn? <laughs> oh, okay, Mike Sullivan, you have the floor. Business at, sorry, this is an item of new business that probably can't be discussed today, so it's kind of notice of new business. Um, a citizen inquired of me if the the environment portion of us have, this, have made any comments about removals of endangered species trees in the city. And I'm talking specifically of the development at Queen Tro where a cucumber tree was apparently removed by the developer uh, two years ago. There, the developer removed all the trees on the property um, the, except a giant maple tree that apparently the contractor refused to take down. It was just too big, but he intends to take it down. The developer does. And I'm wondering if uh, there is some way for the city to protect endangered species. Uh, and maybe I turn to Vani and find out whether um, the, the folks over in, in the tree world can do anything about it. I know that there is a stronger bylaw now, but apparently in 2019 there wasn't. Um, and so I throw it out there as an item maybe for uh, to find out more about apparently the, the stump of the tree and some shoots still exist and whether or not the the owner of the property will not allow anybody on the property so nobody can go get it and repopulate it. There are only 188 such trees in Canada and we lost one here in Stratford. 
Um, uh, I believe that, that maybe at the next meeting we can talk about what, what should be done in circumstances like that, but I don't have any specific actions to give you today. Yeah, and um, wondering about the sort of jurisdiction over, you said it was a at risk, which yes. is provincially mandated, and federally. Right? Yeah. And federally, depending on the- and federal, whether, Yeah, depending on. Yeah. So I, I wasn't sure if we'd ever had any discussion about that for this committee, but mm. not, certainly not in my time, about trees I, in general. I think we should talk to Quinn and just see is there an actual inventory first of any endangered trees or species at risk trees in Stratford? Because wouldn't that be something that was covered when the development natural heritage study, the Perth natural heritage study? Yeah. We can look at that and see what's in there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, so that wasn't you raising your hand to <laughs> for a motion to adjourn, but do you want to now? <laughs> yeah, Mike. I'm assuming no one has anything else. I don't want to be a bad chair cutting people off. Oh, Bonnie, Bonnie. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> That's another that. upcoming event, I guess. Okay, so motion to adjourn. Do I need a seconder, Casey? My brain is mush. Yep. Yeah. Who is it? Yep. I saw the other mic first. Mike Jorna. All in favor? Yeah. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for the bye, report. Everybody. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks for your time.